North Korea has accused the United States of being a warmonger on the eve of joint U.S.-South Korean military exercises. Tomorrow's drills are the largest ever involving U.S. and South Korean troops. Meanwhile, President Trump's national security adviser has said the U.S. and its allies are in a race to tackle the problem with North Korea before the reclusive state achieves its nuclear ambitions. This report from Celia Hatton. American military might on display near the Korean Peninsula. Here, a rare sight. Three U.S. aircraft carriers, so-called super carriers, brought together last month for the first time in a decade. And now the U.S. decision to hold another round of air exercises has raised tensions again. On Monday, five days of air drills will begin the largest ever joint drills with U.S. and South Korean forces. They'll simulate airstrikes on mock North Korean nuclear and missile targets. This comes as President Trump's national security advisor warns the possibility of war with Pyongyang is increasing by the day. The greatest immediate threat to the United States and to the world is the threat posed by the rogue regime in North Korea and his continued efforts to develop a long-range nuclear capability. There are ways to, to, to address this problem uh, short, short of armed conflict, but it, it, it is a race because he's getting closer and closer, and, um, and there's not much time left. In North Korea, news of the military exercises drew dire warnings. If the Korean Peninsula and the world are embroiled in the crucible of a nuclear war because of the reckless nuclear war mania of the United States, the U.S. must take full responsibility for it. On Friday, North Korea held a mass event, celebrating the success of recent weapons tests. The latest one sent a missile higher than ever before, putting the continental United States in striking range. Now Pyongyang is rushing to perfect its weapons technology, including the development of a nuclear warhead that can fit on a missile. Kim Jong-un is getting closer to his nuclear ambitions. Here, he inspects a factory making tires for missile launch vehicles. Some are quick to brush off the exchange of threats between Kim Jong-un and the Trump administration, dismissing them as bluster. But as the U.S. and North Korea ramp up their military capabilities, making no secret the other is the target, it raises the prospect that one misstep, one miscalculation, could ignite a sudden military confrontation, claiming hundreds of thousands, if not millions, of lives. Celia Hatton, BBC News. And I'm joined now by Charles Grant, director at the think tank, the Centre for European Reform, who's just returned to London from a security conference in Washington, where he's been speaking to U.S. officials about North Korea. Thanks very much for joining us here at the BBC News Channel, Charles. Uh, so what intelligence have you gathered from those three, day of three days of discussions about what might happen next between the U.S. and North Korea? I think we're rather closer to military action by the U.S. than perhaps many of us in Europe realize or have been thinking recently. It's not to say it's, it's certain, but what I learned was that many people at a senior level in the, in the U.S. administration don't believe that deterrence can work, i.e. the idea that uh, North Korea wouldn't attack us because we'd whack it if it did. They think the nature of the regime may not be susceptible to deterrence. They are worried that uh, now that Korean missiles can reach uh, U.S. cities, that there may be an attempt to sort of blackmail the U.S. into taking its troops out of the South Korean, uh, out of South Korea, so the whole Korean peninsula can be reunified. And Trump has said he will not allow U.S. cities to be threatened. So I think my view on recent conversations is, uh, unless the Chinese can tighten the economic squeeze around Korea and uh, make the North Koreans think twice about continuing their current policies, then military action is certainly a possibility. Is it possible, do you think, to tighten that economic squeeze? Will China uh, play ball with that, for example? The Chinese seem reluctant to tighten sanctions significantly, for example, by cutting off oil supplies. If they did, they could probably bring the North Korean regime to heel quite quickly, but they don't seem to want to do that. Uh, uh, for, they don't want chaos and pandemonium in North Korea. They don't want the regime to collapse. So I think uh, time is running out, and uh, certainly... Uh, I mean, the, the main argument against taking military action is that most people think that if 
the US did strike North Korea. South Korea would be immediately struck by lots of uh, artillery shells from the North, and a lot of South Koreans would get killed. So the South Koreans are very nervous indeed, but that doesn't, that factor doesn't necessarily uh, seem to be, make it certain that Trump will not take military action against the North. What was your sense from those three days of talks about how far uh, planning for an attack by the US uh, is advanced and how far is planning advanced for whatever scenario might follow an attack? I think planning is advanced and I think there is certainly talk amongst senior officials of a kind of surgical strike, a, a modest attack on North Korea's military facilities to teach Kim Jong-un a lesson rather than an all-out war but of course the danger is that even a fairly modest set of precision strikes could still provoke the North to rain fire on the South, as they put it, and kill an awful lot of South Koreans. So it's not clear that, uh, even, a, uh, that, that, that even a modest attack wouldn't, have, attack wouldn't have pretty ghastly consequences. And was anyone prepared to say anything to you about the, uh, the personalities involved here when you look at uh, Donald Trump and, and, and Kim Jong-un? Kim Jong-un, I beg your pardon. Well, uh, US officials, uh, keep saying this, this, this country, North Korea, is run by a madman, so it, we, deterrence won't, uh, won't, nor, won't apply as normal to that country. Of course, some people, more critical of the US, think that North Korea is not the only country run by a madman. Okay. Charles Grant, uh, Director at uh, the Think Tank, the Centre for European Reform, thank you very much for your time today.